Hi guys, this is Roy Snow. Last time we implemented the save and load function, so now we can save our progress and restart the game from where we stopped last time. Also, thank you so much for your kind comments on my 10,000 subscribers video. It's just incredible that so many people watch my videos and subscribe my channel. This is an achievement done by all of us. Okay, and here's another quick bug fix. Apparently, I still forgot to reset some status when you die. So if you die getting enemies knockback effect and select retry, the player keeps the increased speed value and moves really fast like this. So in this restore status method in the player class, at this line, Okay, let's check. Yeah, so now we can reset the knockback speed. Also, I thought it, it would be better to reset these counters too. So every counter starts from zero again when we retry or restart the game. And since there are several counters, I'm gonna create a method to handle them. Anyway, it's fine, but maybe around here. Public for reset counter. Oops. And okay, copy these counters. like this and then we're gonna call this method when we reset the game player dot reset counter okay that's everything about the updates so let's move on to uh, new stuff and I said I'm gonna work on the dungeon in this video but sorry another something came up and uh, I want to squeeze it here. So we will work on our dialogue system and add two features. The one is, uh, I don't know how to call this, but something like a paging system. So you can display multiple strings one by one without closing the dialogue window. And the other one is feature to display a text letter by letter, you know, one character at a time. And actually these features have been requested multiple times throughout the series. The reason I have been putting this on hold was it requires a reconstruction of our dialogue system. Also, it's a little bit complicated process, but I think you will like the final result. So here we go. First in this entity, we change this dialogues array to two dimensional. Yeah, like this. Also add one more integer. I'm gonna name this dialogue set. Uh -huh. What? What is this? Ah, okay. Yeah, don't worry about this error. We will fix it later. So, and to experiment this two dimensional arrays, let's add a little more text. First, we're gonna add first dimension. So, like this. Yeah, something like this. So the first dimension indicates the dialogue set. So this will be a continuous dialogue, but displayed one by one, like flipping pages. So I created three sets of dialogues. Uh, then in this key handler, 
we change what we do in this dialog state method. So until now we just returned to the play state, but we change this to because maybe the text requires multiple pages to display. So we cannot just return to the play state every time we press enter. And when you talk to an NPC, the program calls this speak method in the superclass. And here we do a little refactoring. First, we're gonna delete this updating the dialog index thing here because you know this method only gets called when you talk to this entity and it is okay if we only need to pass a single page text but now we might need to update the text during the dialogue state so we don't do this here so now we are only changing the npc's direction here so uh, yeah this method name doesn't really represent its function. So I'm gonna create a method called something like face player and move this switch to this method and leave this speak method blank and create one more method start dialog and receive entity entity and integer set to number and uh, in this method first we change the game state to dialog state and pass this entity to this npc object in the ui class also pass this set number to this entity's dialog set number. Yeah, this might look a bit confusing right now, but you'll see how it works a bit later. And okay, old man, we don't call this speak method anymore. So delete this and instead call this face player method and also start dialog and pass this entity and also dialog set set number so when you speak to this old man he turns himself to the player and we switch to the dialog state and we handle the rest in the dialog state and this is the interact npc in the player class you know, until now we changed the game state to dialog state here. But since we created this start dialog method, so we don't need to change it here anymore. So let's delete this. All right, now let's work on the dialog screen. So open this UI class and go to this draw dialog screen method. And okay, so before displaying this text, we check if any text is in the dialog array. We can use this npc object npc dot dialog set npc dot dialog index not equal no eh, okay probably needs to be public yeah okay so if this is not null so we display the text in this array current dialog equal this array so it will display what's inside of this current dialog. And if it's null, then we have nothing to display for now. And that means this conversation is over. 
So we reset the dialog index. And if the game state is dialog state, then we return to the play state. So I created this condition because this method can be called during the trade state too. But in that case, we don't return to the play state even if the conversation is done. So yeah, we needed this condition. And uh, if we press enter while this array is not null, and uh, if the current game state is dialog state, then we increase this dialog index. And after that, we set the enter pressed boolean false. So in the next game loop, this checks this array again. And if it still has text in it, it passes the text with the updated index. And if there is no text in the next index, then it enters this else bracket. Yeah. Let's check. Oops. Hello. A merchant. Okay. Hey, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's put zero. All right. Hello, lot. Enter. 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 Yeah, like this. So the paging system is working, but not for other text, such as this event text. Yeah, this is weird. Yeah, this is weird. Yeah, this is weird. So we need to fix other texts that are using the dialog state we need to put those texts too to the dialog arrays. So this will be a bit of work, but let's do it one by one. Okay, first this player, and in this player class, I think right now the only text that we display in the dialog state is this level up text. So we can simply put this text to the array like this. Then call start dialog. So pass player and uh, pass set num. So this is fine, but I personally prefer to follow the same format in this old mem. So create a set dialog method and set whatever this you know player related text in the array. So I'm going to do that. And so here, okay, I'm going to move this one. And also call this method. So when we instantiate this class, we set whatever text in this array. And then whenever we need to display it, we call it by passing this set number. Okay, and we'll do the same to some of these interactive objects too, like this door. Yeah, this one. Create set dialog. Dialog. and uh, delete this and also we can delete this too and instead call this method dialog and pass this entity and pass set number and this key too so this key has two texts
Okay, the first one is this one. And the second one is, so we change this set number, not this index, because these are not one continuous text. They are different kinds of text. Okay, so we don't need to change the state here anymore. And also, yeah, here, instead we call start dialog. This and uh, this is set number zero. And for this one, set number is one. And okay, what else? Mana crystal portion red. Yeah, this is it. Okay, delete this. Dialog. This and zero. Okay. Finally, this chest. And this is a bit tricky because this text changes depending on the situation. So that means we cannot set this beforehand. And I think there are two ways to handle this. The first one is to, you know, set the text here. Yeah, this is okay. Or we simply don't use this string builder and create two patterns of the dialog beforehand like this. Yeah, like this, and I kind of like this better because we can use the same format. So in this case, so we're gonna just delete this and delete this. So here, so you cannot carry anymore. Start this dot carry anymore, so zero. And obtain the item. So this is set number one. And don't need this anymore. And for this empty, so set number two. Yeah, like this. And also, for this chest, we're not gonna call this set dialog from this constructor, but from this set root method because yeah because we need this root so if you call this method from this constructor then uh, this returns null okay I think that's everything about this object now let's handle the event text so event handler so we are using the dialog state to display these event texts. But the problem is this event handler is not entity. So it doesn't have the dialog array. So we can simply extend the entity here. And that's probably the easiest way, but I kind of don't feel like it because technically this is a handler class and not entity. It's just a preference, but I would create an entity inside of this class and uh, name it like a event master or something, event master or game master, because you know, these are like a voice of God or something. And instantiate the entity here. Okay, then create set dialog
And OK. Master.dialogs. Equal. So this one. Here we call that uh, start dialog method and pass event master and set number so zero. And for this one, Set number one like this, I think. Okay, and finally, this merchant. And this is also kind of unique because for this one, we use trail state instead of dialogue state. So we handle it a bit differently. Until now, we were typing most of the merchants dialogues in this UI class but I think this time we put everything in his dialogue array so so yeah this one and this one And this one. And also delete this. And uh, you can call this face player method. Also, this doesn't really mean anything in my case because, you know, merchant has only down directional sprite. But, you know, if, you, if your character has all directional sprites then uh, yeah I think you want to call this and go back to this UI class and so yeah let's fix this so here we are in the trade state so this time instead of calling that start dialog method but we just specify the set number like this And I think this is the only text that is displayed while we are in the trade state. And for this one, we switch to dialog state. So we can call that start dialog method. And pass npc and set number one, I think. Hmm? Ah, npc and delete this. And for this one, so number two, and delete this, and uh, this one. Set number three, and delete this. And one more, this one. Set number four, and delete this. I think that's everything, so let's check. All right, yeah, old man is okay. Let's check this chest. Hmm. Yeah, looks good. Event text. Hmm. Yeah. And this one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And level up. Okay, now let's 
see the merchant. All right. Hmm. Okay. Bye. Oh. Oh. Oops. Okay. This is fine. This is fine. Okay. This is something is wrong with this one. Uh, I think that yeah, this one set number two. Mm, okay. Oh, this one. Yeah, I think we don't need this because yeah, we switch to the dialogue state so. This method will be called anyway. Yeah, we can delete this. Okay, let me check again. Okay. Uh, ah, all right. Now we can see the text. Hmm. Okay. I think it's working. So now everything is displayed through this new system. Yeah, so if you want, you know, you can display these texts with multiple pages like this. Uh, so this time set number is the same, but increase the index. Then this is good water or something. Drink the water. Then this is good water. Yeah, like this. I forgot to type the period. But then how to display these other sets of this old man? So we have created this set one and set two, but uh, right now it's repeating this first set, set number zero. So when to change this set number is basically up to you. But uh, I'm going to show you an example. So every time we talk to this NPC, we can increase this dialog set. So when a conversation is done and talk to this old man again, then the next set of texts are displayed. But there is a little catch here. So in the current syntax, the old man's dialog starts from set one and not zero because we increase the num before the text is displayed so to start from this set number zero we can simply set the default index as minus one so this will be the first dialogue. And here we create a condition like this. So if this dialogue set number which is a slot that has no text is inside. Then we reset it to zero. Otherwise, this number keeps increasing. Okay, let's check. Uh, so, hello, lot. Mm, good luck. And talk again. Yeah. If you become tired, talk again. Mm. And the first one again. Or you can simply reduce this dialog set by one. And this means it will repeat the last dialog set. You know, we increase this number, but if there is no text, then we negate this increment. So the same text will be displayed. Yeah, first one, second one, and the third one. And talk again. Yeah, 
so he repeats the last set of the dialogue and I think I like this better or maybe you want to set some specific conditions for example display this set number one only when the player's life is low so in that case you can remove this increment but instead set a condition like this so if your life is low you know he speaks something different or maybe he speaks something new after you killed a certain monster or something so feel free to arrange it to your liking but I think I'm gonna keep this method for now and finally we improve this dialogue system a little bit further and display text letter by letter and in this UI class first we declare two variables int char index character index and also string combined text and this is blank then this draw dialog screen and inside of this if statement first disable this but instead we split what is inside of this into characters so type like this to char array and then if statement if char index is less than characters dot length then char index plus plus then string s equal string dot value of uh, characters char index so we convert this character to a string then combined text equal combined text plus s then set it as current dialog so in every loop we add one character to this combined text then set it to this current dialog so the current combined text will be displayed and if this index hits the array length then it stops also when you hit enter we reset this char index and combine the text yep okay let's check good hmm, okay and maybe you want to play sound effect so I created this sound effect <laughs> it's just a single note but we're gonna use this as a you know speaking sound effect I choose this B flat but basically you can choose whatever note if you like a uh, low sound better, then uh, you can yeah, create your own sound effect, I think. I'm gonna copy this uh, sound effect file. Sound. 
and import seventeen and okay so play the sound effect yeah here I think seventeen seventeen okay let's check Hmm. All right, maybe I'm gonna play music too. Hmm, looks good. Feels good. <laughs> and if you prefer displaying the text all at once then you can simply disable this and restore this then yeah so you can return to the former system so choose whichever you like okay that's all for now yep it required a little effort and a refactoring I think we could do this a bit more elegantly if we had these features in mind from the very beginning but still I think we got a pretty nice result so hope this was useful for you thanks for watching and uh, until next time